good morning guys i'm just wandering around this morning just a wandering what do we got here uh-huh sweet almond sweet almond just starting to bloom this thing guys we've had a drought here and uh, we're starting to get some rains now we're coming into the monsoon season just look at this thing as long as this thing gets some moisture this thing will grow this is sweet almond excellent if you can grow this in your area grow it it's got a really great smell and bloom the bees love it uh, this I put this little guy in here and uh, it's been slow to go but these things will get quite tall you can use them for hedgerows whatever oh what do we got here this morning ducky ducky it's just ducky what do we got here I don't know what's going on guys I only got one hen that's coming in here the rest of these are drakes these black these black drakes are pretty cool I got one head coming in here he had a he had some gray speckling in him looked like a little Appaloosa pony pretty cool looking I had one that had a face all chewed up uh, his beak was all sideways, looked like a fox chewed on his face, and he got away. She was coming in here for the longest time. I don't see her no more. They're kind of cool to have around. They're good eating, too, from what I hear. I don't think I've ever ate one. But you could take the breast meat out of that, wrap it in bacon, and bake that thing, guys. I'll bet it's excellent. But uh, anyway... They're cool to have around, so we just, we don't, we don't, <laughs> I'm eating rib, ribeyes, guys. When I get hungry, when, when Biden finally gets me down to where I can't afford much, yeah, you guys may be in trouble, okay? But right now, Steve-O's eating ribeyes. What's, what are these little girls doing? <laughs> threw a little feed in there, cleaned out their nest box this morning. I threw in some katook in here. There's a, I just saw something fly by. It looked like a metallic uh, a blue bee. Metallic blue bee. There's getting to be some in this area. Yeah. I just saw one here. Anyway, I threw some katook in here. They've been picking at it. Oh, uh, what's going on over here in the bee department? Let's wander. Let's do some wandering over here. Oh, these four little girls here are doing all right. This one's slow to go. I gotta check it on uh, that one on 623. That was one of those uh, split off deals. Uh, the top portion. Uh, I moved the I moved the queen over and I left her here, but the the queenless portion here on site. And we'll see how that goes. Now, if they don't go good, hey, I've got, when I start grafting, guys, I've got a hive right here. That triple stacker, that thing is doing super good. And what I'll do is start pumping out 15 of those black queens at a time. And anything, that's, anything that ain't up to snuff, hey, I'll go in there and uh, I'll go in there and pinch that queen and install. They're bringing in pollen, so I know i got a queen in here. I know I have a queen. There's another one. Just came in with pollen. I know there's a queen in that box. All right, here's an idea, you know, with the pallets. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at there. They're already chewing up the blue towels. They're already shredding them blue towels and getting them out of there. That's good. All right, I had another little brainstorm, guys. I'm, I'm breaking, you know, I'm shutting down this pallet on these stupid rebar legs. I'm going to take a pipe wrench. This is liquid nail on there. That's pretty heavy stuff. I'm going to put a pipe wrench on there, and I think I can wring them right out of the holes. I'm not going to clean the rebar up. I'll leave that stuff on there. I'll save these. They're expensive, those rebars. I'll save them for a cement project, whatever. But I'm also saving these pallets. There's another one right there that I had these bees on. You see what I'm doing here with the blocks? Quickie stand, guys. Quickie stand. Now, winter comes. You see the way I'm making these these days? I'm using these 
piece of plywood. Now, can you also use the uh, pallet wood there also, which will be happening. This pallet here is going to get broke down, okay? And I've already got my chop saw set up to 21 and 5 sixteenths, and I'm going to start chopping them. 21 and 5 sixteenths is what this is from here to here on, the, on these hives. All right. Here's, here's Steve-O's game plan. I'm trying to think what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm losing my oxalic acid vapor. I'm not getting a good saturation. If you go out there and look at Bob Benny's video on his latest um, research they're doing on, with, his, with, a, with oxalic acid, they are doubling the strength of that stuff, and they're getting a very good uh, mic kill with it. Okay? I've been shooting my my AO through the top, AO vapor through the top with my little hub thing. You may have seen it. But it's blowing out the bottom pretty fast, okay? steve has got an idea. Hmm. steve has got a trick. Here's the trick. Taking this 21 and 5 sixteenths material, right? As I'm starting to come on in winter now, a lot of this AO treatments... Uh, Benny and the boys have been shooting it around December. All right, he likes he likes 40 degrees to shoot this stuff. All right, what happens at that degrees? All right, your your brood pattern. They're not doing a whole lot of seal brood. Just very little to maintain the colony. But what they are doing is clustering. All right, here's Steve-O's game plan. Taking those 21 of these these deals here, right? It'll take about three, maybe four, doesn't matter, whatever, of those 21 and 5 sixteenths. I can set this beehive on the ground right quick. I can pick this beehive up, set on the ground, lay down those plankings. Now, they need to be the same thickness. Some of these are three-quarter. Some, are, Most of them, the majority of them are half-inch. But this whole pallet here is heavy-duty. It's almost, it's, I'd say that's 5 eighths or whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as the material is all the same thickness, because I'm going to be butting these up, those 21 and 5 sixteenths on these blocks. I'm going to pick the high back up and set her down there. Yeah, I'll just set it right back down on those those rails. Now I've sealed off the bottom. You say to yourself, now you sealed off the bottom. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You know why? You're going to have a friggin' slot here, three quarter slot in here, right? What are you going to do with that, Steve-O? What are you going to do with that big slot? you got these boards now. What are you going to do with that slot? I'll tell you what I'm going to do with that slot. I've got a whole bunch of uh, mattress foam over there. Actually, it's been the back of an archery target. I'm going to make slices of that and take my hive tool and just shove it in that crack right there on each side. That's all I'm going to do. Shove it right in that crack. Mm -hmm. That's going to seal that up. Now I've got a sealed off bottom. Very simple, quick sealed off bottom. Now, when I cut these, I'm going to put them in tall earth. I'm going to dip them in tall earth, right? The winter's over. I've got all these boards stacked up that I've shoved under all these hives. Are you going to put maybe, probably three, I'm guessing, three pallet woods under each one of these on the width of that? Width of that deal there? You've got the, the board on the end there is, is a... That's a, a two by eight, which is about seven and a half. Then you've got, on this particular hive, is plywood, so you've got to have a three quarter and three quarter, right? And that in the middle. So I th would say three three of these will fill that up. And it doesn't matter if it's hanging over. You tall earth these things, and now you've got something that's not going to rot on you. Now, after winter, uh, whatever, I'm going to keep keep getting pallets i found a resource in tarpon springs it's, it's a uh, uh it looks like a uh, furniture place large it's a big warehouse and they've got a ton of them out there and i found him on craigslist is what i did anyway uh, they got them all the time so i won't run out of pallets but there's tons of places like that that you can go to and get these free pallets but yeah i've got a bunch of these pallets here i've got some more around the corner they're going to get broke down and uh, they're going to go on hive stands 
concrete block hive stands and you can just put them in all kind of crazy configurations that's good too for when you these queens are coming back from their mating flight they can orientate to that box better than you could a nice lined up stands right okay another cool trick uh, it's not like guys that I'm running out of hive stands you think you think you think guys I've got enough hive stands Yeah, these were free. These were all free. I've had these. I've had these for about I don't know eight, ten years. I was on a job site, and uh, I'd always have a track hoe, a large track hoe, and and or rubber tire hoe, front end loader type hoe, and a and a 950 loader usually with change out forks. Those were my tool, two main tools of the trade, all right? Putting in pipeline, did it for forever. Put in pipelines, millions of miles of pipelines. Anyway, I'd go on these job sites, guys, and the, and the general contractor that I'm working for, I'm trying to get pipe in the ground. They're trying to run up a freaking high rise or whatever next to me. I'm underground and they're putting swing and steel over my head yeah we never got anybody killed thank god but anyway they would be coming to me guys day day in and day out all day long steve can you do me a favor can you do me a favor yeah what do you need i need to unload that semi right there it's got air conditioners on it. it's got lumber it's got steel it's got this it's got the okay you know i, I, I <laughs> You know, it's in their head. They know I'm going to be there, right? I say, why? Why should I rent a forklift if I can get Steve out to unload this stuff for free? Yeah. Anyway, so that's what I do: unload it. And I'd always tell them, you know, I'd bust their chops. I'd say, Yeah, you owe me another one. You know? Yeah, I guess so. You owe me another one. Hey, throw my throw my operator a few bucks too. You know, he's over here busting ass trying to get my pipeline unloaded, trying to get pipe laid out on my main line, and you guys keep pulling him off and having him do these little cute tricks. Uh, how about throwing him a dollar or two? I don't need any money. Okay, throw that guy because he's busting his ass unloading your stuff and my stuff and this and that. You know. So anyway, they would they do that. So I just tell him, yeah, you owe me another one, bro. You know. So at the end, toward the end of the job, there'd be wood, there'd be plywood, there'd be stuff all over the site, steel, you name it. I just look through their pile of goodies, you know, and I go to the con. I, you could see that they're not using the material, right? It's not going to be used. Either the guy that's putting it in or whatever is going to haul it back to his stockyard or whatever. But a lot of times that stuff is ends up in the dumpster of all things i mean you could build an entire home guys from the stuff these guys leave on a job site it's incredible so i'm watching these blocks guys there's a pile of them a big stack of them over there and i'm looking at this guy and the building's going up they finished the building and i i asked the contractor i said well, does somebody not know how to count or, or what, what is our problem here do we have a he said, apparently this dude can't count. And I told him, I did a quick calculation. It looks to me like you're getting crazy with the blocks, bro. What are you doing? Well, that's what, the, that's what they said I needed. Duh. <laughs> so I told, I told him, I said, good Lord. It's going to, you know, why didn't he haul it to the next job site? He said, that's what I told him. Get this stuff out of here. You're, it's in my way. And I said, I could use some blocks. Because I had the idea with this, putting these beds in and and, and putting, uh, I've been planting. I put this katook in here and I put, I put butternut squash in these beds. This has got biochar all in it, guys. This thing is loaded with biochar. I made it myself. It, it grows... It grows excellent. I mean, it's not really black soil, but I occasionally throw some uh, some wood chips on this thing. Of course, I'm using the wood chips for the uh, shavings for the chickens, and they're working that into the soil. 
along with that biochar. Yeah, so anyway. He said, I go, I told this guy, I gave him his last warning on these blocks. He said, I've had enough of this dude. So he comes to me the next day. He says, you want some blocks? I said, yeah. Because I knew I was going to do this little project here. But all I did was put this thing down, guys, in here. And just, uh, and I probably screwed up royally because I should have put the first block on flat. You can see the cells are up. So they're sinking. They're, they're you know, it's got to be retuned here. But I'm actually thinking about leaving that first row in because I, this land slopes here down. When I get the monsoon, I mean, it's a river flowing into this swamp. All right. And I have, I have lost all my topsoil a couple times blowing into this swamp before I put the blocks in. So I may be taking out this row and this row and this row may leave these katuk row like it is um i've been eating this stuff i've been feeding it to chickens I, you can see there i put some in but anyway yeah you can do this with uh, make stands with this stuff and you know i mean this pallet guy still stinks of diesel fuel uh yeah, that is some smelly stuff, but the bees don't seem to care. They're just going on like everything's hunky-dory here. Anyway. So, yeah, there's some free blocks. Um, yeah, I've got I got plenty of beehive stands, guys. But I think, I think my pallet wood deal is going to work out slick. I can stuff that foam in there for the winter. When spring comes, that foam comes out, and those boards come out of there because you've got a nice clean hive. You keep a nice clean hive with that screen bottoms on there. So it's going to be no big deal to throw those 21 and 5 16 strips underneath there, maybe three on each one. I'm going to dip them in tall earth. And then after winter, those can go right on the side of a pallet hive. Yes, it can. Let's quit fooling around, wandering around here. Let's quit wandering around and go to the forest and see what's in the forest. Steve-o, really. All righty, guys. What do we got here, guys? Remember me showing you the saw palmetto blooms? Well, this year, guess what we've got? This look, looks like it's going to be a really good year, guys. And this doesn't, this doesn't happen often, about every two to three years conditions have got to be right but what you need in here and then I haven't seen in years and years is honeybees somebody's got honeybees now there's a cattle farm right over there the cattle ranch right over there the other side of this woods I bet you he has let somebody put some bees in there because look at this I saw bees on on the on the blooms and uh this is the result. Uh-huh. Honeybees. Imagine that. Imagine that. I've been I've been asking the state for years to let me in here. And no, 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 can't. Oh, that's just too dangerous, you know. We got people on horses here. And I said, you know, I know how to work around all them people. Yeah. It's called common sense, okay? But no, they're all puckered up with attorneys and this and that. So anyway yeah this is this is the result of honeybees now now I may be um, maybe doing some harvesting but I can't harvest this stuff until September It'll be ready in September. Yeah. So we've got a ways. 
Everything eats this stuff, guys. Everything eats it. Black bears, raccoons, coyotes, white-tailed deer. They all, everybody eats this stuff. Rats, you name it, they eat the saw palmetto berries. So without bees in here, not so much, no. I didn't see that many love bugs in here this year. Normally it's just covered. These, these, uh, these blooms are covered with love bugs, but they, they weren't uh, heavy this year for whatever reason. But the honeybees were. And so, yeah, it's just a little trick from nature. It's funny how nature, God and nature figure things out and our government doesn't seem to have it figured out yet. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll figure it out one day. But anyway, I want to show you one more crop. Uh, lightning bolts are fixing to hit me here, so I'm going to leave this woods. And I'll show you another crop that's just coming in. Alrighty, guys. Here's my next honey crop coming in. Just starting. It's all down through here. All these stalks. See them pumping out these stalks? They're all here. This thing is just starting. The bottom's just starting. And matter of fact, there's some pollinators on it right now. Could be some of my honeybees. I'm within a mile of this. Of this. I'm right in a. I'm right in a shopping area, parking lot right here. But this stuff is all out in the woods. All out in the woods. Yeah, this is my next honey crop. This stuff comes in fast, guys. I mean fast. This is called the sable palm. Us cracker boys call it swamp cabbage. Because you can eat the top out of that. There's a palm heart in that thing. But you want to get the short ones about five feet tall to do that. Not these big tall ones. But this, I mean, there's literally thousands of blooms going to be happening here. And, uh, yeah, there's already, there's already bees on it flying around. And this thing isn't even, this thing isn't even popped out yet. But this honey comes in fast and furious, guys. There's some of my honeybees on it right now. Yeah, and it, it isn't even popped yet, guys. Some of the, some of the old boys in my circle, they go, Hey, Steve-O, you want to? You want to go out in the woods and get us a, a piney wood rooter and we'll cut us some swamp cabbage. And we'll have some, we'll get us some wild pig and some, cook us up some swamp cabbage. Yonk, yonk to? That's the way they talk. Y yonk to, Steve? Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, Deliverance. The, these fellas that I hang out with, uh, they're not quite there yet to that, you know, that deliverance stage, but, uh, it's close guys i mean these guys are these guys are close to it but uh really steve but uh anyway yeah this is our next crop here guys all right guys i got a ton of things to do today i got all kind of projects going on so uh hey be happy be strong and let's keep getting their own because you know we just got to get her done see you soon bye-bye